As you're watching this YouTube video, millions of people around the world are taking different kinds of tests. Alison is taking the multi-state bar examination to obtain her new law license. Jose is taking a written test to obtain his driver's license. Bryony is taking the medical college admission test in order to get into her dream veterinarian school. Giselle is taking the Iowa tests of basic skills to understand her ability in different content areas ranging from reading to mathematics. Even for Daniel. Well, he's taking a zodiac sign compatibility test to find out if he and Kelly are a compatible couple. This may be too far-fetched. Let's focus on one particular type of test that is the flagship of all different kinds of tests. Standardized tests. One thing you may wonder is, where do all these tests come from? What do these tests tell us? These tests are products of educational measurement. In this video, we're going to answer the question, what is educational measurement? We all love brand new shiny cars with state-of-the-art features, but do you know how a car is made? This is the production line of making a car, from manufacturing each part to assembling them together. Different people with specializations in different things are working at different stages. The end goal? To provide a fantastic product to the consumers. When we think about all those standardized tests, the entire process of developing, delivering, and after-sales service for the tests supports what measurement is, assigning numbers to people in order to represent some of their attributes, college readiness, requisite knowledge to be an effective practicing lawyer, or other traits that cannot be seen through our eyes. Those numbers are what we commonly call test scores. Just like you need different people specialized in different things to work together for making a fantastic car, when a test is developed, experts from different areas work together for the same purpose. To make sure that the scores people receive on a test accurately reflect those unobservable characteristics. So, who are those experts? What do they exactly do? And how are the scores being produced? Let's take a look at what's happening in our measurement factory right now. We get a new order. The Little Bakery Association asks for our help to develop tests to measure kids' ability to make delicious cakes and breads. Let's prepare this order request from the starting point of our measurement production line. But first, how do you define baking ability? Just like we want to measure a person's math ability or reading ability, but as we cannot see those abilities directly through our eyes, we may have different definitions of baking ability. Would that include awareness of kitchen hygiene or ways of baking cakes in different locations? How can we answer those questions? Test purpose. The purpose of the test drives all questions that we encounter during the process. Therefore, we invite expert chefs, food critics and other stakeholders in the baking industry to define the cooking ability we want to assess and the approach that we will adopt to assess. For example, whether it's through answering questions on a test or engaging in a baking activity while being observed, or both. Moving down the production line, the experts in the field, again, bakers, food critics and more, work with measurement experts together to create questions on the tests. We call them test items and decide how to score them. How many items will be on the test? How long does the test take? Does putting wasabi in a cake give you higher scores for creativity? Those people work really hard around the clock to produce a test that is delicious, I mean, desirable. Before the little chefs could eventually take the test, we need a test run to make sure that our test does what we wanted to do. We invited a group of little chefs to take the test. We asked them questions as they take the test to see if they understand the test items and what the test is asking them to do. Also, when measurement experts compute the scores for each little chef, they are also looking at the quality of each item and the whole test through some data analysis. If there are things that need to be fixed, which almost always happens, they revert to the previous stage and reiterate this entire process 
until everything looks good. Our baking test is finalized. Now, the little bakery chefs take their test and get their scores, which hopefully are accurate reflections of the consensual definition of baking ability formed at the beginning. Is this the end of measurement? Can the measurement experts close up production and start binge watching Netflix while enjoying the cakes from their little bakery association? <laughs> they wish they could, but unfortunately, no. As long as the bakery test is an operational test, there are many operational concerns and issues about measurement. For example, how do we protect the items from being shared to future test takers? If the future test takers have seen the items before the test, the scores may not be an accurate representation of their baking ability. That would not be fair to the other test takers who did not see the items before taking the test. An even bigger issue is constantly ensuring that the scores the little bakers received on their test reflect their performance as bakers in the kitchen, not just on the test. After all, if the test scores cannot tell us about the little chef's baking ability in the real world, why give them the test in the first place? How could that test possibly be useful? Luckily, measurement is a concrete discipline that has tons of research behind it to solve all kinds of problems that people may encounter in using tests to serve their unique purposes. New developments on how to accurately assign scores to test takers are burgeoning every day. Maybe we will never achieve perfect measurement, but the measurement field is striving to better achieve its goal. Assigning scores that accurately tell us some of the characteristics, abilities or attributes of human beings that we simply cannot see with our eyes, and doing so in a manner that provides useful information for the people using the tests.